Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Future Talk. Today's guest is a woman who has pursued her education as Master of Forensic and Medical Science. She is not only born and raised in Myanmar, but also finished her high school in Myanmar as well. However, she has been working hand in hand with many international companies, fashion brands, and production houses successfully in Myanmar right now. She's recently opened up her physical transformation in social media and has become a social media sensational ever since. She was also the one of the judges from the Make Me Beautiful by L'Oreal Paris and also the award winner of Pride of Myanmar 2018 as social influencer. She is also a leading entrepreneur in the beauty industry and a business owner of a company called Beauty by Neji. Please welcome our young and talented Neji Wu. So Neji, we have seen you in many characters in terms of the way you do the vlogs, on your Facebook, YouTubes, everything. But in short, how can you describe yourself? Describe myself? Mm -hmm. oh my God, I feel like I'm in an interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Neji. I was born and raised in Yango. I studied in England to become a forensic scientist. But when I got back home, things got changed. And I started my very first career as a beauty blogger. And I've been in this industry for three years now. Um, I've achieved so many milestones for myself. Uh, it was such amazing three years of my life. Mm -hmm. And now I've become an actress, an entrepreneur, a social influencer. Mm -hmm. And I have my own company called Beauty by Neji. And I am planning so many exciting projects mm -hmm. for this industry. So if you were to pick like which uh, along all these uh, job scopes, which one is the most uh, the one that you feel, you know, the most happiest one to do it? Uh, definitely social influencer. I started as a beauty blogger because that's what I was passionate about in beauty mm -hmm. specifically. But now I get older, I get more mature. I want to show more about my lifestyle, about my family, my friends, everything. So uh, I went into a social influencer sector and now I'm very happy and very proud of it. Because of that, I got chances to go into film industry, also got chances to do my own business and stuff like that. So I want people to see me as a social influencer. Mm -hmm. So is that the, the message that you want to send it out to your fans, the new generation, to the, to the girls out there, Chi Chi as the business entrepreneurs, or anything special that you want to add on? Yeah, I want people, especially the young generation, the young audience, because I have so many younger fans, and they call me Chi Chi, uh, to see me as a social influencer more than the business entrepreneur, because I've just started and I'm not really sure which one's gonna be a bigger perspective of my life. Right now, I really like that I am a social influencer and I have planned for very long term, a long run to be a social influencer. Mm -hmm. So a very quick question though, like what's the, what's the take off that you have being an influencer? What is the main thing, the responsibility that you have to take as an influencer? Well, I want to say that I am very authentic because I always express my feelings. There's no secrets about me, you know, there's lots of dramas and rumors going on with my physical transformations, my boyfriend relationships, my family problems and stuff like that. So I want to say that I'm very authentic and true to myself and that's how I gain audience and attention from public. Uh, for that responsibility, it's quite hard because for me right now at the stage being three years of social influencer, I kind of have to limit some space for myself, some privacy, you know, there are some cases that I can't share with the audience, but for me, I was like, oh, I'm very open-minded. Everyone knows about me. Everyone knows about my family. But then I've got some negative impacts for myself. So for that responsibility, I am trying to manage those. Mm -hmm. Which should I expose to public or which shouldn't? So uh, another one is after doing all these businesses and uh, projects that you're going through, what's the special message and what do you want the audience, your fans to see you as? Well, my fans, they always see me as Chi Chi. Like, they call me, I am the queen of Chili because that's my fandom's name. I have a fandom called Chili's. They always kind of want to see me as a fun, loving, active, very authentic, very true to myself, very open-minded girl. Um, but for the audience, I want them to see as a very professional social influencer because since I started as a beauty blogger, I started about 
writing blogs about makeups and reviews and stuff like that. But now I become a social influencer, so I try to expose more about my lifestyles and tips and fashions and stuff like that. And I have planned for the long run with the career as a social influencer. So um, for my fans, they still want to see me as a fun, loving, but then for the audience, I want to see me as more mature, more professional social influencer. Mm -hmm. So in this market, you're being one of the top influencers. What is going to be the, um, the etiquette or the, the must have of being an influencer? Uh, to be a very good, uh, top ranked social influencer. You need to be true to yourself. You need to be authentic to yourself. No matter whether you have, uh, you know, like a big forehead like mine, mm -hmm. or no matter you have a birthmark or whatever it is, that's how unique you are. Mm -hmm. You need to express your uniqueness and you need to express to the audience the real you because no one can be you. You have your uniqueness, you have your own characters, your charisma, and as soon as you can expose them, express them to the audience, and when they feel, oh, that's the real you, kind of get connected, and that's how you get audience, and that's how you get engagement. So for my responsibility is to be authentic, true to myself, uh, that which I've always been, and I am planning to carry on doing that. Mm -hmm. That's very important, actually, because lots of youngsters are coming on board on the digital media. Yeah. But then uh, with your help, with this message, I think uh, many people can grasp what is being the influencers and being on that tech, and that's the main key to the uh, success. Yes, true. So what is your belief in being successful? Do you think everyone can be successful without any struggles? Absolutely not. Um, I think people cannot be succeed without struggle without the risk of failure. It's something similar to like, you can't love without the risk of loss. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need, you kind of need those struggles and risks to be successful, which I, which means is that if you think you're quite successful without struggles, that means you're doing okay. If you're doing okay, trust me, you're not mm -hmm. because you're living in your comfort zone and you need those kind of struggles and, and, and stress to be successful in your career or your life or whatever it is. For me, I've got, struggles in my career as a beauty blogger uh, because I'm a social influencer. I work a lot on a digital platform, so I've got lots of hater comments, personal attacks and stuff like that. I've got those, those kinds of struggles since my very first year. But then um, I kind of think them as my motivation because I know that I need them so that I can go think outside the box. I can go outside the comfort zone. So for me, I kind of take them as my challenge and I always seek for the hate comments mm -hmm. because in my posts, all my fans, they always give me positive comments like, I love you, you're so pretty. But then at the same time, I'm looking for the hate comments because that's how I get like, oh, why did you say that's that? Really you know, really like, push you. Why, why, why yeah. would you say that? Why would you say that? Why uh -huh. do you think I'm fat? Why do you think this is not nice? So that's how I get motivated. And that's how I started to think new things and oh, what should I do? How should I be more different or like still be true to myself? But I always look for those kind of things. That's my struggle, but I treat them as my motivation. Mm -hmm. So while struggling, what I, I'm pretty sure like everyone will have a darkest moment. So one of those struggle moments, how would you overcome those uh, darkest moments as well? Uh, I, I used to get lots of stress from hate comments because I wasn't used to it. Uh, before starting this career, I was just a normal student, a mm -hmm. university student, my parents are uh, very traditional and they never thought me or I never thought of become a beauty blogger or social influencer trying to post pictures and get likes and get money from it. That's that's what that's not what I was planning to do. So when I get when I started blogging, first of all I've got lots of positive comments. People try people I've got lots of good engagements and I've got followers, thousands and thousands of followers every month. But then the, those negative comments kicked in and I was a bit depressed and stressed. Like, why would you say that? Like, you don't even know me. I tried to question myself of what they're trying to comment me. Like, if they say, oh, you're fat. I'm like, why am I fat? Like, I should, I, should I be fat or should I not be fat? I try to criticize myself and that's how I get lots of struggles and depressions. But then now it's, it's an experience work, I think. Three years of experience. I know how to filter them out right now. So right now I don't really get um, those kind of struggles anymore. So during your struggles, I'm pretty sure there's going to be lots of ups and downs. Yeah. And, you know, among those, you might have uh, darkest moments as well. So could you 
Please share us how do you overcome those darkest moments. Uh, well, it's kind of related to my job struggles, but then it kind of more related to my personal well-being. Uh, as I said, I, I, I am very open-minded and I always, true to myself, talk everything about myself, my family, my boyfriends, my friends, everything to the audience. And uh, I kind of messed up in relationships, which mean communicating with other people and having a bond with another human being. Mm -hmm. not, I'm not just talking about my boyfriend's relationships, I'm more talking about like business partners and family and stuff like that. So when I started this career, I um, got a chance to meet lots of business partners and lots of friends from this industry, other beauty bloggers, other actresses and actors and stuff like that. So uh, when I met them, I treated them like my close friends, which I shouldn't be because they're totally strangers. So I talk a lot about myself and what I'm going to do in two months, what I'm going to do in three months and, you know, stuff like that, mm -hmm. go on. And then um, I got lots of back mm -hmm. in my past experience and um, I was so broken inside because I treated them as my close friends, but then the way they treated me is totally different. So, yeah, I kind of think those are my darkest moments of my life. I was so depressed. I don't really, I didn't really know who to trust in this industry anymore. Mm -hmm. Or should I speak exactly the same like I used to, like being open-minded and express myself. But then from, you know, months to months, years to years now, I try to control myself, manage myself, how to communicate with people, how to treat them, like putting them in a boxes. So they're giving them different spaces, like how I how I should treat to my management team, how I should treat to my friends and colleagues from this industry, and also my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So yeah, kind of give spaces, and now I'm getting much better now. So um, correct me if I'm wrong. So the way you overcome the darkness is you put categories and you try to make sure and understand the situations. And um, what would be the one thing that what's the solution that you overcome? How you overcome? You know, uh, I understand that you have the journey of lots of ups and downs, but yeah. what would be the one thing that you got to say whenever that you have a darkest moment? What is your weapon to overcome? Allowing myself to learn from other people mm -hmm. and try to let myself absorb because I used to be a bit egoistic. Okay. Like, I'm like me, me, me kind of thing. I love myself. I want to be the best. I don't really care about you kind of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then after those dark moments, I try to treat differently to people and also treat differently to myself that I am willing to learn. I am willing to change. Um, I try to, I, I, I make so many mistakes in my life, but after that, I learn things that I should change in my life. And that's how I get adapted. And that's how I try to see things differently. Like, um, messing up with my relationships. I try now I try to get good relationship, not just about families and friends, but also with the brands and business partners and stuff like that. So you're telling me that um, you have groups of people that you get support from. So are you going to say that are the mainly how would I say the major part of you being successful? What is the what is their importance and their priorities you being successful in this journey? One of the top reasons why I am right here being successful is that because of my self-confidence mm -hmm. and also hard work and support, of course. Mm -hmm. Support means from my parents, from my partners, from my friends as well. So yes, they kind of contribute a percentage mm -hmm. to my success, but then if, I, if I'm not willing to learn or if I'm not willing to change or if I don't want to invest in myself, I think I wouldn't be as successful as I am right now. Mm -hmm. So, for example, my parents, uh, lots of rumors has it, um, people say that um, I am who I am right now because my parents are rich and I'm a rich kid, even mm -hmm. though I'm 28. They still treat me as a rich kid. When I started this career, I tried to be financially independent on my own. My, Of course, my parents buy me stuff, physical items for my personal usage, mm -hmm. but um, for other stuff, like getting a manager, trying to get a team for myself, I try to invest a lot in them. Mm -hmm. So um, financially, my parents are not supporting me anymore, but morally, they have supported me since I was born. Because 
they kind of knew that I was born different because mm -hmm. the way I think, it's totally different from my siblings. I want to be very independent. I want to be totally different and I want to be unique. That's how they, so they kind of give me that um, special support, like mm -hmm. morally, like what you want to do. We will support you even though they didn't understand what does the social influencer mean, what does the beauty blogger mean. But since day one, they supported me throughout morally so that when you know you have a big support from your parents, that is a really good feeling. That's how you gain confidence from your family and friends. And I think that's how it contributes to my society. So if that's how you get the confidence, what if the parents were never supported you? What would you be? Well, self-confidence is a personal skill. You can practice it and you can keep developing and developing. For me, confidence comes from so many ways. Mm -hmm. Of course, my parents give me support and that's how I get confident because when I get into this industry, people kind of treat me well, I don't want to say dodgy, but a bit different. They think that, oh, how did you get these money and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So after they know that I've got this kind of support from my family, financially and morally, they kind of treat me with respect. So that's how I get confident. Like, I am who I am. I study, I graduated, I have really good degrees and stuff like that. That's how I get confidence. But also I can get confidence from other stuff like makeup and you know, being a social influencer and doing what I love to do, these kind of things, I can get support as well. So if I don't get any more support financially from my parents, I am totally fine right now. But morally, I think that would be a problem. Mm -hmm. So another thing is uh, during this journey, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of haters, people who attack you in both in personally or whichever way. How do you overcome and how do you take them to move forward? Uh... Okay, let's go back to my very first year of being a beauty blogger. As I told you, I've got, um, when I started to get those negative comments, I felt really small, mm -hmm. like I felt really weak. And I tried to question myself, why would they say that to me even though they don't know me? I just keep questioning myself, why, 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 why? I think that's the situation lots of social influencers, beauty bloggers and celebrities try to um, have that in the very first time. For me, I had that as well, but how I overcome it is that um, during my experience, my practice, I kind of realized that I need those kind of comments. Mm -hmm. I need those uh, kind of haters to motivate me, as I said, to you know keep pushing me, keep pushing me, keep pushing me so that I can go to a next step. Mm -hmm. Because when you uh, start to feel comfortable in your comfort zone, you think you are the best and you think this is the life, but then no, there's so many steps that you can do in your life. And I'm still young. And since I was young, I always dream big, big, big. So if I, when I want to go bigger, I kind of need like a step, a stepping stone. In my industry, in my career, hate comments, people who hate me, people who, you know, deliberately attack me on social media. They, these are kind of like my stepping stones. Mm -hmm. Like they kind of, um, attack me about my body transformations, my neural transformation. They used to call me plastic queen mm -hmm. or whatever it is. But then that's how I get motivated. Like, oh, I'm going to do more. I don't really care. I'm going to do more steps. I want to transform myself and stuff like that. So for me, I kind of treat them as my stepping stone. Mm -hmm. So let me bring you back to your college girl time. Okay. Yeah. So what made you choose this path? Is it you're driven by your brain or your heart? Ooh. <laughs> um, oh, it was, it was very stupid to talk about. Uh, I studied forensic and medical science because I wanted to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. That's how I started this career, this path. Um, I finished my high school in government high school. And after that, um, I didn't get good grades to get into medicine. I've always wanted to get into medicine because I thought I really like to be a doctor, but then it was just a lot of peer pressure and also a pressure from my parents. That's how I wanted to become a doctor. After my high school, all my friends, like 80% of my friends got into med medical university and I didn't get in. So I was very embarrassed and I didn't know what to do with my life. Uh, I don't know whether you remember or not, we had to put three options in our um, university. The priorities list. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Request form. Mm -hmm. The very first thing I put is medicine. Second, I put medicine. And third, I put medicine. <laughs> That's how I didn't get in any of those. 
I was just so stupid. I didn't plan ahead. I didn't know what to do with my life. I thought if I become a doctor and I would please my parents and I'll be fine, and I'll get married one day and stuff like that. When I was young, I planned to get married at the age of 25. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm 28 and still single, but I's very fine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's how I was stupid. I just wanted to be graduated and please my parents and stuff. But things messed, got messed up. I didn't get into medicine. So after that, I wanted to study abroad because very first uh, excuse is I was very embarrassed mm-hmm. because I didn't get to the medical university. So I tried to negotiate with my parents that uh, when I got into um, college in England, I would definitely try my best to get into medicine, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. My parents struggled a lot to financially support me to study abroad. That's what I remembered. But then I was just stupid. I was so... You know, stubborn, and I just want to got out of this country and study abroad. When I studied there, um, I was still the same. I was not very motivated with education. I was just having fun with my friends, and I got messed up with my college credits again. So I didn't get into medical university. But uh, what I realized is that I really like in problem solving, and I really like medicine. I really like biology and chemistry. So forensic and medical science has become my um, last option mm-hmm. and my parents asked me whether I wanted to come back to my country and you know just um, have a business degree or stuff like that mm-hmm. into um, in, in local university or whether I want to study abroad as a forensic scientist I didn't even know what those forensic scientists do but then knowing that I could stay longer in a foreign country for more four more years I wanted to take that risk because Uh, knowing the fact that I become more independent, I want to learn more for myself because uh, while I was in college, I, I stayed alone, I worked and all my life in here, I didn't really get a chance to, you know, communicate with people, communicate with friends. But there I've got lots of opportunities and chances to have a self-development with my personal skills and stuff like that. So um, I kind of negotiated with them again and I studied forensic and medical science. Mm-hmm. After that, um, at first I thought I'm going to study and work in foreign countries and never come back to my country. That's, that's what I planned. But when I got there, I found lots of struggles to, to work outside the country and not to get support from my family, not just financially, but also morally as well. So I decided to come back uh, with my forensic and medical science degree. When I got here, there's no job. We, don't, we, we didn't have a forensic laboratory, a government forensic scientist lab here. So I was kind of messed up again. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do with my life. After that, I started to think that, okay, this is enough. I've wasted so many times. I should have thought ahead. I should have planned ahead of what I wanted to do. If I wanted to do, do something about business, I could just go into business management without thinking about, oh, I need to go to get into medical university and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I, I could have just studied ecology and go to medical, uh, to um, business, business studies. But I think, didn't think ahead of it. I was just so, I was just so young and I was just so stupid. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, message to my younger audience. If you guys are in high school, think ahead, plan ahead. What do you want to do? Like if you want to go into a specific professional career like a music or even acting or social influencer, you need to start building up of what you want to do. Break down big dreams into small pieces and start to achieve those small steps because for me, I didn't do it. So it was kind of like a waste of time for me. Mm-hmm. But then studying abroad had given me so much opportunities and chances of to become who I am right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was a very shy person, but when I got there, I was pushed by my um, college and university to talk and to communicate and to do presentations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's how I become very talkative <laughs> like right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got lots of um, opportunities and I've gained lots of personal developments from them as well. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, speaking of your fans and the uh, next generation, let's say, Um, the uh, the career that you are doing right now is not listed in the uh, part, some uh, part of the uh, university curriculums. No. So how would you encourage people like you? And then what would be the um, the steps that you would tell them to prepare their minds in order to getting their goals? Yeah, uh, being true to yourself, being authentic are the basic steps. 
-hmm. You can't just be a top high ranked social influencer if you are just authentic and being true to yourself. There's so many steps that you have to build and that you have to invest. For me, from my experience, as soon as I got into this career, I kind of knew that I need to get a good management for myself. Uh, uh, at those times, there were no very good agency to manage us as a social influencer because that market was very, very limited at the time. So I decided to have my own management. I hired my own manager. I hired lots of freelance photographers, editors, videographers for myself. That's how I tried to develop and invest in myself. So if, you're, if you want to become a social influencer or a celebrity, you need to think those steps ahead as well because you can't just post your photos on internet and it could go viral and you could get lots of attention and famous within a click. Mm -hmm. But the thing is how to sustain it how to have this as your professional, well income career, it's it's different thing. You need to plan those ahead steps. Like, why? what do you see yourself in three years? What do you see yourself in four years? Are you still going to be a social influencer? If you're still going to be that, you're going to get older, your audience will get older, are you prepared for those kind of stuff? So many things that you should plan ahead. For me, I didn't learn them from books. Mm -hmm. I didn't Google it. I just learned from my experience because for me, this market, Myanmar market, it was quite difficult for me to learn at the same time because having a manager is a new thing, it's a new trend in my industry when I started hiring managers. You know, having your group of people trying to support you, trying to manage you, trying to make you those princess kind of figure. It's a totally new when I started it, but now lots of celebrities have their management team, lots of stuff like that. So when I started it, it was very hard for me to learn from other people. So I just started to learn from my mistakes and I tried to learn a lot from this industry, business people, business partners, and that's how I get developed. So if you want to be a really good social influencer, you have to be very passionate about and you have to be very hardworking as well. Mm -hmm. So um, moving forward, yeah, uh, in the uh, social media, I've seen quite a lot of people showing off or telling and communicating about their transformations, their journeys, even in the fitness, makeup, yeah. your industry. So I want to ask like, what's the transformation that you do for yourself, both physically and mentally? Uh, within three years, I've done so many transformations, not just talking about plastic surgeries. I want to, I have my own standard self living lifestyles. I hear you say you have lots of jobs, projects, and you yourself is investing yourself in the company. So if I may ask, how many projects per month are you doing? 